Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 10.30 to 11 a.m. session of the 2019 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are happy to introduce a presentation called Into the Future Web-Based Virtual World. Our speakers are Dieter Heine and Steve Levine. Please check out the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for full speaker bios, details of sessions, and the full schedule of events. Dieter is the creator of the web-based virtual world platform Cyber Lounge. He has traveled the metaverse since 2007, evaluating grids on behalf of education. He is also the CEO of Metaverse School, and he will talk to us about those today. Steve Levine, known in-world as Steve Franklin, is the founder of A Dimension Beyond, a small company working in design and support for VR, AR, and virtual worlds. He also works in Cyber Lounge technology. The session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag OSCC19. Welcome, everyone, and let's begin the session. So, hello. First, a big thank you for having us again. And let me talk about a few things where I see connections between our web-based virtual world and the OpenSIM community, and especially ways uh, how you can bring in new users uh, to make aware of OpenSIM, what is possible, and how to connect with your grid. Uh, on the slides, you will see some current uh, snapshots from our platform. So just to give you an impression uh, how we matured over the years and what's capable already. So we will start with a uh, short introduction. So uh, this talk will be about solving a problem which is known to many grid providers, namely uh, how to bring in uh, new people to your grid. In my opinion, the number of uh, virtual worlders is only increasing very slowly. So it really is um, a challenge to bring in new users and make people aware what's possible in virtual worlds. And I think uh, we can provide a new way uh, to attract new users. Yes, Steve, go on. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. The By the way, the the big long URL there, just click on the box here to your right and you will get the information on how to get into Cyber Lounge. Uh, it's much easier than trying to work that whole long URL. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, what are the problems we are going to address? So uh, how can you bring in new users to visit your OpenSIM grid? And how can you effectively demonstrate the content and features of a virtual world on your website, even for people who have never visited a virtual world again uh, yet? So, and uh, also how you can support new users with uh, basic issues like registering, downloading a viewer, all the things necessary before you can uh, uh, effectively enter a virtual world. And the simplest solution, in our opinion, is to integrate a virtual world region into your grid's website. So it means people uh, can have a first glimpse into uh, the metaverse just by uh, opening a link or just by visiting your website. There's no installation required. There's no registration and you can already demonstrate many features which are available, available in virtual worlds. So people can not really, uh, or not only see uh, what's possible, they can really do it. And uh, you can also uh, use it to give or provide interactive support for new users. Well, not only that, Cyber Lounge is also a world unto itself. So you can, you can expand it any way you really want to. So it isn't just that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, Steve. So uh, here's a, a list of the main features. There are many more. And uh, I think the biggest is, uh, thing is you can, uh, thanks to Robert Adams for his really great and effective uh, OR file converter, you can use an, your uh, region and 
import it simply into a web-based virtual world. We support drag and drop for GLTF files, so it means you can uh, have the converted ore and simply drag it into an empty uh, web world and it will appear in a couple of seconds. We also have uh, text, voice and video chat uh, for groups and also for one and one. Uh, you can stream audio and video. We have uh, integrated in the meantime a physics engine. Uh, we have real-time lighting and shadowing. Uh, we are working on event-based scripting. Uh, you have a complete set of build tools so you can create uh, your own content directly in the virtual world. Uh, you can drag and drop uh, almost any content from your desktop into the virtual world, images, documents, sounds, 3D models, uh, full presentations, means a set of slides. And if you uh, drag and drop a URL, um, and a web page on a prim will appear either with a uh, static or with usual HTML content, or if it's a, a URL from YouTube, you will get a, a video player playing this video on the spot. You can uh, provide uh, files for downloading, so it means if you are a grid operator, uh, you can have uh, an object which will give the installer of the viewer to your uh, visitors, and you can guide them interactively through installing uh, the viewer for your grid. And our, one of our latest uh, things we do, we are adding or we have added support uh, for Oculus Go and uh, currently working on support for Oculus Quest. So you can uh, even uh, walk through uh, the region in a VR environment using the Oculus controllers and interact with the scenery. Um, yeah, also, the region size, we got a little question about that, and I'm going to slip it in because it's appropriate here. Um, the region size, I think, is a 4x4 four four, uh, if you go uh, by... No, it's a 2x2. It's a 2x2. Two, it's a 2x2, two two. Two, okay. 512 so, by 512 meters. Okay. So 512 by 512 meters, uh, and so you get a, quite a bit of room to build in. Uh, the... Uh, front end it works on uh, HT it runs HTML on HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, WebGL, and WebRTC. Back end is just Apache, PHP, MySQL. Voice is provided by FreeSwitch. Uh, it works on all major browsers on desktops, laptops, Chromebooks, tablet computers, smartphones, and VR devices. Basically, uh, Cyber Lounge is just a web page. So anywhere a web page will work, Cyber Lounge will work. So it's also, when you talk about actually hosting it, it is still just a web page. So it's very easy to host. Uh, one of the things that a Dimension Beyond does is web page hosting and virtual world hosting. Uh, for setting up a Cyber Lounge uh, region is not hard. It's really quite simple. Uh, Dieter will get into the details of the works here yeah so like steve said the architecture is really based on a classical uh, web stack so it means uh, uh, a full deployment is just setting up the database and the rest is copy paste so usually you can set up a, a server in less than 10 minutes and you have full support uh, for, for everything. So it's uh, based on standard uh, web technology. Uh, we have, like I said, in the final front end, it's HTML and CSS. Then uh, the JavaScript uh, layer with uh, 3GS uh, as in WebGL uh, wrapper, MOGS, which is a, a JavaScript port of the bullet physics engine. And we use uh, Verto.js, uh, as a wrapper for WebRTC to be able to communicate with a free switch voice server. So in principle, this could also be a, a connection point. So if uh, an open SIM grid uh, runs on free switch, it could be or it would be possible to connect from both worlds. So it could uh, connect from a, a native viewer and you could also uh, connect from a web viewer to the same free switch server. And the rest is a classical uh, web stack, web server, PHP, MySQL database on almost any uh, operating system. Yeah, the fun part about it is, is it works on almost anything, and you don't have to have a really high-level machine to run it. Uh, we've tested on all sorts of things. 
uh, some of them not so great, and uh, it generally runs Cyber Lounge just fine. Yeah, also just to give you an impression, um, as it is um, more like a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, virtual world, which means uh, a lot of load is uh, transferred to the client, uh, the server really needs a minimum specification to, to be able to uh, host a session. So it means uh, we had meetings with about 20 avatars present uh, running on a single core with 512 megabytes of RAM. Yeah, so this kind of thing... <laughs> It's so simple, in the ultimate end, it could run on something like a Raspberry Pi or some old server you got in your closet somewhere. Uh, all you have to have is a decent internet connection to it. Uh, it also doesn't use or doesn't need any kind of extra special plugins or anything. It runs on a stock browser. Yeah, so just to answer uh, some of the questions in the chat, uh, I'm not sure, uh, but the uh, question related to the uh, Chrome browser plugin, uh, because uh, Chrome in all versions, and we are testing always the latest version, uh, supports uh, all the technology we are using, WebRTC and WebGL, uh, uh, without any plugins. It also runs, I yeah. like it better on Chrome actually myself, but it does run just fine Firefox or whatever else. I've tested it on quite a few different things, and uh, so far, it's been I've been really surprised. Yeah. Also, the thing is, uh, in our testing pipeline, we uh, test with uh, latest versions of Firefox, Chrome, even with Edge, Safari Mobile, and Safari Desktop, uh, and Chrome Mobile. So. Uh, all these are supported, uh, and also including the, the Oculus browser. And even with Oculus, you have full voice support, and you can join an event in virtual reality, uh, exchanging information and talking with people uh, just accessing through a web page. There's, um, just let me, um, there's one more question here while you're answering a couple questions. And Frank uh, Rulof asks, can you jump from the web page into OpenSIM? <laughs> that's a that's a problem not of the web page, but uh, in in principle, if you have a, a, a URL uh, which will open your view or can be used in your viewer, then in principle it would be possible. But the thing is, as we are web technology, the only thing we can provide is uh, hyperlinks, and then uh, you have to handle these somehow. But okay. on the other uh, thing, it's possible to join a web world just by sending out emails with a link. And if you click on the link, you are directly uh, transported into the 3D world. Uh, we've got a question here from yeah. Micro Maze. He says, what about Opera? I like using it. Uh, try it and see. It'll probably work fine. Yeah, also uh, I've not actively tested Opera lately, but uh, in previous version we had no issues because especially the Opera uh, gaming browser supports all the technology stuff. So just give it a try and uh, if you have some issues, let me know and I will try to make it compatible. So uh, just a, a quick outlook. So uh, at the moment, uh, the web-based virtual worlds uh, are not planning to compete with traditional uh, virtual worlds, but we uh, just want to provide a simple access for really new users without any installations uh, from any device. So uh, I think uh, we had uh, a lot of discussions uh, what's the future of virtual worlds uh, will be or may be, and I think one direction which we should uh, not forget about is uh, especially young people are going straight to mobile. Also when I'm talking to students, 90% uh, of their internet access is done through a smartphone or maybe a tablet, but they barely use uh, laptops or even desktop PCs. So uh, what we will tr try to do is that we, over time we will have uh, a full set of features available, like I said, on a, almost any device. And uh, so we can use uh, our technology from everything, from entertainment, using it as collaboration spaces and even to education. 
Yeah, well, that's kind of the whole idea. The uh, the future and the way things are going, especially with the younger people, is to uh, portable devices. So we kind of have to be on top of all that. Uh, if you want to see us and talk to us some more, we will be over at Lucky Number 13 booth in the ex- exhibition er- area. Uh, the uh, Here's some various ways to uh, find us. If you want to know more, just click on that box, and that'll give you the uh, places there, too. So uh, that's basically it. Any other questions? Um, There was a question that was asked kind of uh, early on, and I'm not exactly sure what it pertained to, but Alan Scott had asked about region sizes. Uh, it sounded like either for ore conversion or uh, as they compare from region, say, from Open yeah. Simulator across to uh, Cyber Lounge. Yeah, it's it's a two by two region, so it'd be the equivalent of four Open Simulator regions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, about the scripting. Um, there will be two approaches. The one is uh, you can use a uh, plain JavaScript, which will be sandboxed uh, for scripting. The other thing that we are currently have in, in development uh, for our scripting engine is uh, something similar to Scratch. So you will have a graphical user interface for scripting. You don't have any great uh, programming experience. You can simply uh, click your scripts together and have them run uh, as you wish. Any but you don't. Questions? But you don't have oh. to know a real programming language. That's a that's a key point. Yeah. Well, the thing with Cyber Lounge is we're trying to make it as simple and easy to use as possible, and as universal to use for everybody. We don't want anybody that can't use it. Uh, we want to make it so it'll work uh, behind firewalls and all sorts of other things. So uh, that was where the whole thought came from. Uh, so the Scratch version will be available probably uh, in the first quarter of 2020. Uh, yes, we have uh, full mesh avatars, and uh, we've even tried successfully to uh, have had converted avatars from OpenSim into uh, our platform. So it means we have an own animation system. Uh, we are just currently switching from the open sim avatars with a limited number of bones to have uh, a new generation of avatars which have almost 170 animate, also uh, bones you can animate, which will uh, provide even facial expressions. And this means uh, what we uh, in our development pipeline we use or we are working with uh, face tracking. So you can use your webcam to t- uh, check your face, and we'll have the uh, your facial expressions directly transferred to your avatar. And uh, don't hesitate. Yeah, oh, go ahead. That. I'm sorry. I just have a question that um, has come in from YouTube. And that is, uh, where do you find the software to create a web world like this? Um, To run a web world or to create a web world? Well, the Uh, question was to create. Also creation tools for to, for building a virtual world on the web are already included in our software. So it means uh, you can start with an empty region and you can start building from scratch everything you want. Or importing, like yeah. just take an OR file you already have and pop it right in there. But you can yeah. also use uh, DAE files, GLTF files, any or almost any 3D model which can be converted in one of these formats can be uh, created in there uh, to, or dragged in there directly from your desktop. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, we've got about one minute left. If there's another okay. question, you want there, to- well. The uh, the thing is, too, is you can take, like, if you look at our, the link that I give you for a Dimension Beyond Web Worlds page, uh, the web world that's in there uh, is an actual OR file taken from OpenSim. It's just an easy pop it over there. Uh, it wasn't modified in any real big way. It does need some modifications, I think, in some ways, if you get down into details. But it works really well, and it's quite usable. And the graphics are really quite good. 
Very interesting. Okay. Any last thoughts for everyone? Okay, then thank you so much for your attention. And if you have any questions, please visit us at our booth in Expo Area 3, booth number 13. Yeah, okay. you'll you'll note that that particular booth has a different color and it has a big rotating cube on the top of it. So you can just kind of land there and just fly and zip right on over if you want to. Okay. Well, thank you, Dieter and Steve, for a terrific presentation. As a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. Following this session, the next session will begin at 11 o'clock a.m. in this keynote region and is entitled Seagate Viewer. Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 19 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and explore the Hypergrid Tour resources in OSCC Expo 2 region, along with sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. Mm -hmm.